know how she's going to be when she gets them teenage years. Amen. Amen. Look at her. That baby's crying for you already, Shay. Crying for your mom and daddy. Amen. That's what they're crying for. Man, good to be in church. Man, I feel wonderful tonight. I appreciate your prayers. Amen. I've heard a couple others been sick also since Sunday. Man, that's some rough stuff. Amen. I thank the Lord. Amen. To be able to feel better. Amen. Amen. It drains you. Genesis chapter number 22. Good to be here for Bible study. If you are like Brother uh, James, brother T uh, Tim mentioned, uh, Fellowship's Friday night. If you're interested in going, please let us know so we can kind of make arrangements about the van if we're going to need to carry it. Amen. It's at White Plains. First time they've hosted the uh, fellowship, so that's going to be exciting. Don't forget Brother Ted and them, the funeral Saturday, setting up Friday up in Durham. I know they'd appreciate your prayers. Amen. Genesis 22. We're down to the end of the chapter. Uh, it's probably maybe a little less exciting verses than it was at the beginning of the chapter when it's dealing with the offering up of Isaac here. We broke down the chapter three ways, verses one through six. We seen the trial where God tempted Abraham, and Abraham came out victorious, which is the second part of the chapter, verse seven through fourteen, the triumph. And then we see the last part we'll look at tonight, verse fifteen through verse twenty-four, the testimony. So through the offering of Isaac, we see the trial that God put Abraham through, the triumph that came out of it, and then the testimony that Abraham had in the end. Amen. And that's the way our life is. We live our lives, there's many trials that we face, and if we go out victorious, there will be some triumphs in our lives, and we'll come out a great, clean testimony for the Lord. Amen. We'll shine bright for our Lord. Let's read the chapter, Genesis 22, verse number 1, down to verse number 24. The Bible said, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. We see there was no hesitation in Abraham. God asked for Abraham to do something, and he went forward doing it. Amen. And my, by the way, if God asks you to do something, God will make a way for it to come to pass. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young, young men with him and Isaac his son and clayed the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place which God had told him. Uh, told him. Then on the third day, so it was a three-day journey, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar so off. That's the place that God told him to go to. Verse 5, And Abraham said unto the young, the, his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and there's a key part to this passage, and come again to you. Abraham was going to offer up his son on the mountain. He was going to do what God told him to do, to offer him up a sacrifice. And Abraham, when he looked at those servants, he said, I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and come again to you. Abraham knew. He accounted it according to the New Testament that God gives us in the book of Hebrews that God was faithful and that God had promised a seed through that son that if he was to put him to death, God would raise him up from the dead. He said, me and the lads going to worship and we coming again. He knew God would have to get him up. Amen. He, that's faith in God's word. Amen. If God reveals things to you, no matter what it looks like on the outside, God will always keep his word. And so verse 6, and Abraham took the wood and the burnt offering, and, and uh, laid it upon Isaac his son, which is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ, the wood on his back, the knife and the, the fire in the hand of the father, which is the judgment the father put on the son on the cross. Great type here. And took the knife in his hand, and uh, take the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. Amen. It was the God man on the cross for you and I. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Boy, I like this next passage too. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb. He made himself a lamb. He was the lamb of God, which taken away the sins of the world. He, God, he said, Abraham said, My son, God will provide 
himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. That's a male lamb, by the way. Amen. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in, in the stead of his son. Amen. Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. That Jehovah Jireh means God will provide. Verse 15, And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. So God had spoke to him to not slay his son. He saw the ram. He slayed the son. Now the second time God had spoke to him and said, verse 16, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned unto the, his young men, just as he said he would in verse 5. And they rose up and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. And it came to pass after these things that it was told Abraham, saying, Milcah, she had borne children unto uh, thy brother Nahor, Huz, his firstborn, and Buzz, his brother, and Kimuel, the father of Aram, and Chesed, and uh, Hazo, and Pildash, and Jalaf, and Beth Bethul. And Bethul begot Rebekah. These eight Milcah did bear to Nahor, Abraham's brother, and his concubine, whose name was Rema, uh, Rema, she bare also Teba and Geham and Thahash and Micaiah. Amen. Let's pray and ask God to help us tonight. Brother Terry, good to see you, brother. How about pray for us? Thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. Yes, help us, Lord. Everybody had a good week. Good to be in church, amen. Amen. The testimony. When it comes to a testimony, you know, well, a real biblical testimony is showing forth God in our lives. And what Abraham comes out on the other side of this temptation, this trial that God put him through, as a testimony of God, amen. He reflected God through his life. Amen, and that's what we ought to strive to do is reflect God through our life. Have a clean testimony, a testimony that glorifies the Lord, a testimony that exalts the Lord, a testimony that causes others to want to have what we got. Amen. We have salvation. We're born again. We're God's children. And as we live our lives and victoriously through the trials and temptations that we face, the more we reflect God to this world, amen. That's what we ought to do is reflect God to this world. So we see this testimony tonight. Hey, this is what God said about Abraham. Look at verse 15. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, because thou hast done this thing, thou hast not withheld thine only son, uh, thy, thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thee, as the stars of heaven, 
and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. And God begins to go on and say what he's going to do through Abraham's life because Abraham was obedient to God. Amen. God said, Abraham done what I asked him to do. Hey, I wonder tonight, could God say that about me, you and I? We've done, we have done what God has asked us to do. I mean, that's the testimony. Hey, whatever God wants. You know, God's not asking us all to do the same thing. Now, God's asked us all to be saved. He wants everybody to be born again. But after salvation, God directs our lives differently as we serve him in this world. As he describes the body of Christ over there in 1 Corinthians chapter number 12 that we're all members of when we get saved by the good grace of God. Hey, some of us are fingers, some of us are fi uh, feet, some of us are hand, ears, eyes. He, he makes up the body in that way. He's describing the believers as the body of Christ and Christ being the head. And it takes all members of the body to do the functions of the body of Christ, amen, if you will, as the head directs us, which is Christ. And you know what? It takes all kind, amen. The finger can't say to the toe, you know, I have no need of you or vice versa, like he said over in the book of Corinthians. Hey, we're all needed, amen. Everybody's not the same, but everybody is important in their place and in their position. And God wants us to get in our place, obey the Lord, and let God get glory through our lives, amen. Build a testimony that we are obedient to him. Look at Hebrews chapter number six. This is God's testimony. He said, I swore, amen, amen. He said, and the angel of the Lord called on Abraham to have, out of heaven the second time, and he said, by myself have I sworn. What did, what did he swear by? He swore by himself. You know why he swore by himself? We'll see over in the book of Hebrews because there's no greater to swear by. I mean, who are you going to swear by? People say, well, I swear to God. You ever see people do that? I, well, I swear, do you, and you're lying through your teeth. Be careful saying stuff like that, amen. Hey, hey God said, if I'm going to swear by somebody, that's why when they go into court, they, you put your hand on the Bible and you swear to, to say the whole, the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me, God. You know, it, it used to mean something, you know. You put your hand on the King James Bible and say, I'm going to say what's right and I'm not going to lie, you know. Hey, what are you swearing by? You're swearing by that book. Something's greater than you and I. Hey, God's going to swear. Who's he going to swear by? Who's greater than him? You know what he said? He said, I just swear by myself because I am God. There's nothing greater than me. Amen. If we swear by ourselves, it really don't mean nothing. But when God swears by himself, he doesn't have nobody else to swear by. Amen. There's nobody greater than God. And that's what Abraham, God's swearing. Look in Hebrews chapter 6, look in verse number 10. We'll read the rest of this chapter. It's pretty neat right here about this context. He says, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. He knows everything we're doing, just as he knew everything Abraham was doing. He didn't forget his work. He didn't forget his labor in love, which you have showed toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. Hey, how long are we to do it? Till this thing's over with. It's practically speaking to a born-again believer today, hey, we've got a labor. We've got a job to do, amen. And we're to do it diligently. We're to do it with full assurance. And we're to do it to the end. Look at verse 12. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself. The Hebrew writer is referring to what we just read in Hebrews cha uh, Genesis chapter number 22, after Abraham has been tempted, after Abraham obediently offered up his son, after God stopped him from offering him up, gave him a ram in the place to be offered up, and God saying, Abraham, I'm pleased with what you did the labor and the work that you've done. And now God is swearing to Abraham when he comes at him the second time, and God is swearing by himself. Look, look back in Genesis 22. Hold your place right here. Look at them both together. Genesis 22. Look in verse uh, number 16. And said, God, Abraham, he called, the Lord, angel of the Lord called out to Abraham out of heaven the second time, verse 15, verse 16, and said, by myself, have I sworn by myself? He's swearing by himself. Look back in Hebrews 6, verse 13. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself, saying, Surely, blessing I will bless thee, 
and multiply, and I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. It took a while for Abraham to get that promise. Have some patient enduring. You know how long he waited for that promise, see? He waited so long, and we remember what he did before he waited patiently like the Hebrew writer shows he miraculously and victoriously came out on the other side. There were some hiccups along the way. He, he, him and his wife got together, and he laid with Hagar, and they got Ishmael before Isaac. Amen. And which was not the promise seed. It was the one born after the flesh. Amen. And he, but God said he patiently waited. You know, sometimes we just stumble around down the way and God says we make it to the end and he says, boy, you sure did do good. Well, I'm glad he makes us look better than what we are. There's a lot of times we stumble along the way and then we get to the will of God and start doing what's right and God shines the light on us like we're something. God's always making us look better than what we are. I'm glad God does that. I'm glad, he, I'm glad God don't reward us like we deserve. He would say, well, I just want what I deserve. No, you don't. None of us really want what we deserve. I'm glad we get mercy and grace and God's long-suffering, amen. Hey, hey, Abraham made it to the end, and God said, hey, boy, you did it right. Well, I'm glad it's going to go come a day we're going to stand before the Lord, and hopefully by the good grace of God, there's going to be some rewards on the other end, and God's going to say, enter in, thou good and faithful servant. I've been faithful in a few things. Enter now into the joy of the Lord. That's what I'm looking forward to, amen. Amen. I'm not making uh, uh, ways for a failure. I'm not making excuses for failure. I'm just saying I'm glad God's merciful. Amen. I believe we ought to strive and be as good as we can. But sometimes we all make mistakes. By the way, if you've made some mistakes, that's, that ought to be encouraging as you look at these uh, Old Testament characters and look at New Testament characters and look at lives that you've seen that God can still use your life after mistakes. Amen. It, lot, uh, the brethren might put you on a shelf, but thank God God don't put you on a shelf. Amen. God wants to use you. He can use you. And God blesses you. And he, look at verse 16. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife, wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation, who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which entereth into that within the veil, where, whether the forerunner is entered for us, uh, excuse me, for us entered, even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Hey, God said, hey, I swear by myself. And he's bragging on what God, Abraham has done through his life. And I'm, I'm thankful that we can have a testimony that the God of heaven can say, hey, that's my servant. It's kind of like he said to the devil, have you considered my servant Job? Check him out. He's one of mine. He's got a testimony. He fears God. He eschewed evil, right? Hey, hey, Abraham had a testimony. And God can say, hey, I'm bragging on my, my servant. Well, who would you, who wouldn't want God bragging on you? I mean, God bragging on us? Hey, that's, a ta who, that's what we're to strive for, to please our Father. Just as parents, uh, we want our children to strive to please us. And when they've obedient to us, it pleases and thrills our hearts. How much greater our Heavenly Father wants us to walk in His steps and please Him and give Him glory and honor that we have a testimony that we reflect His name to this world. That's what it's all about, amen. It's a testimony. Abraham, Abraham did, every, did everything Abraham had was God's. That's what he's saying here. Look in verse 16, back in Genesis 22. I mean, when God went to Abraham, he went for his best. Abraham loved nothing more than that son. He longed for nothing more in his life than that son. I mean, since he came out of Ur of the Chaldees when God promised him a seed through his loins, through Sarah and Abram, and she, Sarah and Abram, what they were called early on, hey, God promised them a seed that would multiply over the world. Nations would be blessed through them. 
God was going to use them miraculously. And year after year, they longed for that and waited for the promise of God to come. And finally, after mistakes and failures, it's come in their lives. And he's there. He's his prized possession. God calls him, take thy son, thine only son. Abraham had another son. He had Ishmael. But as far as God was concerned, that was his only son. And as far as Abraham was really concerned, I know it hurt and grieved him when he had to get rid of Ishmael, but that was the boy. That was the promise. That was the thing he longed for in all his life. And he finally had it, and he's getting up there over teenage years and over the hump. Maybe sooner or later he's going to be married. We'll see this, and, and children will be born, and that promise will be, be, begin to be fulfilled in his life where the nations of Israel is going to come out of his loins. And God says, take that son, thine only son whom thou lovest, and offer him up. You know what God said I want from you, Abraham? I want what you love the most. You know what Abraham proved to God? It doesn't matter what you want in my life, you can have it. Now, that's love. Hey, Abraham said, this is, hey, that was his best. That was, that was what he longed for. And that's what he had, and God said, I want him. You know, what if God come wanting your, Ish your Isaac? That thing that you love, that thing that is your life. And, and God said, uh, Abraham, I want him. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took him. You know what Abraham's showing? God, I don't care what it is in my life, you are number one. Now, that's easy to preach and easy to say and a whole lot harder to live. What if God said he wants your Isaac? What do you got that's before me? Nothing's to become before the Lord. Anything that becomes before the Lord becomes an idol. God's number one in your life. Hey, I believe you ought to love your wife. Hey, wives, I believe you ought to submit to your husbands and love them. We're to love our children. We're to love the things of God and God's blessed us with. We're to love our ministries. But our ministries, our wives, our children, hey, uh, our spouses, they're not to be before God. He's number one. Amen. And if he's number one, everything else will get the right attention it deserves. When you start putting something before the Lord, you begin to make that your idol. Everything Abraham had by giving Isaac was showing that it's God's. God, the Lord giveth, and the Lord take it away, blessed be the name of the Lord. Everything is his. Verse 16 says, And he said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son. This was the testimony of Abraham. His testimony was that everything he had was God's. It's his. It's yours, Lord. Everything I got is yours. He withheld nothing from the Lord. Amen. Hey, hey, it's dangerous to have a testimony where you're holding certain things back from God. He wants to be number one. Let me give you a New Testament parallel. Hold your place here in Genesis and look in the book of John, John chapter number 12. I'm talking about a testimony, a testimony in your life that everything you have is God's. I, you know what? The truth is whether we want to admit it or not, we wouldn't have it if it weren't for God. We wouldn't have it. That skill you got, you wouldn't have it if it weren't from God. Hey, that spouse, those children, your life, your, hey, you name it. It all come from the good hand of God. It come down from the Father of lights. He gave it to us. He giveth gifts to the people of God. Hey, hey, and it's rightfully so to give it back to him. God, you gave it, and it's yours. Whatever you want to do with it. People are holding back on God. And hey, we're not to hold back on God. Look what Jesus said here in John chapter 12. Look down in verse number uh, 24. Verse tw look at 23. And Jesus answered them saying, you see that? The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Look at this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die... It bringeth forth much fruit. Hey, one of the examples there is the Lord Jesus Christ. He, died, he went into the ground. He died, but he brought forth much fruit. Hey, you know what else is an example of? Our flesh. Except it die, 
He's not going to bring forth fruit. you got to crucify this flesh. you got to let it fall down in the ground and let God do something with your life. you got to get yourself out of the way and say, God, not my will, but thine be done. You might pray like Jesus in the garden. Hey, let this cup pass from me. God, take it away. If there's another way, let it happen. Nevertheless, not my will, thy will be done. What did John the Baptist say? He must increase and I must decrease. Hey, it's about getting yourself out of the way. I'm talking about a testimony that Abraham had. Hey, his testimony was that everything he had was God's and God was always first in his life. And God swore by that and said, hey, I can say that he did. Look at verse 25. It's the context of that thing we're reading in John 12. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Hey, hey, it's about giving it to God. I mean, can he not do more with it than we can anyhow? I mean, think about it when you were lost. You had your life in your hands, and you done what you wanted to do with it. You don't have to answer, but how'd that turn out? I'll tell you how it turned out. We all wrecked our lives. But when we gave it to the Lord and crucified our flesh, boy, God made something out of our lives. Anything's ever been good come out of us, God brought it out of our lives. I'm talking about God working through you. I'm talking about a testimony tonight that Abraham came out on the other side with a testimony hey, because God was first in his life. He, he gave him everything. He held nothing back from the Lord. Look at this, Matthew chapter 6. Held nothing back. Everything he had was God's. Maybe some of you tonight are struggling with certain things in your life. And it might boil down to the fact that you just won't give it to God. You, you can't put it in his hands. What is it you won't give to him? What is it you're holding back? What is that, what is that secret place you won't let him go? You know? So, uh, I, you just got to have No, you ain't got to have it. It's ruining you. It's wrecking you. Amen. Hey, give it to the Lord and let him do something with it. Hey, it could be something bad. It could be something good. Hey, but whatever it is, give it to God and let God do something with it. Trust him with it. Hey, people start getting their own. This is how people start shipwrecking their lives. They start making decisions on their own without God and without God's will, and there's something they want that God don't want. And you're going to have it, and you're going to get it. And people get to me, well, I'm going to get it no matter what. You young people start getting a little bit of age, you start dating somebody. Well, I'm going to get him, I don't care what it costs. And I'm going to get him, and I don't care what it costs. Hey, that's not the right attitude to take. You're going to wreck your life is what you're going to do. You better let God give you the right one. Wait on him. Don't ruin your life. Hey, hey, give it all to him. He knows what's best. Matter of fact, if you'll let God have his way, God might even let you have it. Hey, he, Abraham, take thy son, thine only son. He took him up there and God spared him and let him have him. God just wants to know if you're willing to give it. Sometimes. Just wants to know where your heart is. He's got to be first. Matthew 6, you know the verse. Look in verse 33. The Bible says, but seek ye, what? First. The kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. All these things. All of them. Why? If you just put him first, is he number one? Does he get what's left or get what he deserves? Don't give God what's left. Give him the best. Amen. He deserves the best. That's kind of, the principle is in that Old Testament when they were offering up them animal sacrifices and flowing over into the days of the Lord Jesus Christ, they want to bring those lame animals and those sickly animals, offer up something that's not any good to them to offer to kill and eat at the house. Just give God something that's weak and sick. We'll take the good for ourselves. I mean, is that what he deserves? No, he deserves the best we got. Matter of fact, you know what I've always found out? If I give God my best, he'll make my worst better. 
That's what he'll do. Maybe you give God your best and God will make you worse better. You know a good principle? Give God the tithes and offers that's right to him. And God will make that 90% you got left better than what it was when you had it 100%. That's just how God works. You can't outgive give God. That's why I don't like that kind of stuff. It don't matter. You just don't, you're not living your life, man. Because maybe that's your Isaac, that dollar. No, it's God's, man. It's about the work of God and getting around the world. Hey, trusting God. It's about principles of faith. It's about principles of living your life. If you can't walk with the footman, how are you going to run? Well, do with this, uh, the, the horseman or the swelling of Jordan. I mean, you, you, you're tripping over the baby stuff. I mean, come on. That's, 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 that's baby Christianity. Faithful to church and giving tithes and offerings and reading and praying. That's never in the kiddie pool, man. Right. And it's good stuff in the kiddie pool. Ain't nothing wrong with it, but I'm talking about going a little bit further. What are you going to do when he wants Isaac? Abraham's testimony was everything he had was God's. He would help nothing back. God was first in his life. Amen. Hey, hey, you know what his testimony was? You can trust God. He, this is the testimony. Look back in Genesis 22. The testimony that Abraham had is that everything belonged to God. Amen. He was first in his life, and you can trust God with whatever he wants. Has God not been faithful? Can anybody really, justly, stand up and complain to God that he ain't been right? You ever, you ever done something by faith? Can you really turn around and say, God, you, you done me wrong on that one? He ain't never done us wrong. Not one time and never will. Amen. I'll say amen to that. He's faithful. Amen. You can trust him. Amen. He'll always come through. The, the Bible said, uh, look, look, look in verse number 19. And so Abraham returned unto his young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. You know what that verse shows me? That God kept his promise. Remember what we said when we was reading the passage in verse number five? He said, Abraham said to the young men, abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. He said, I'm going to trust God. I don't even know if he even told him boys what he was going to do. I know he hadn't told Isaac because that's why Isaac said, hey, father, I see the wood and Here's the, the knife and the fire, but where's the lamb? He had discussed it with his son. Hey, you know, there's some things you go through you just can't discuss with nobody. You just got to put faith in God. Hey, by the way, here's a good little thing. Hey, there to be some things you pray about you don't tell nobody else to pray about. Now, I'm all about corporate prayer, and I'm all about sharing prayer. I like, well, I thank everybody that prayed for me when I was sick Sunday night. One of those times I just wanted to see if the Lord would hear my prayer and mine alone. Man, I'm glad you prayed. <laughs> but you know what? Sometimes it's good to tell nobody. It's good to know that, hey, you personally can talk to your heavenly father and he can hear you. You and him talked it over and he answered your prayer. And you know you shared it with nobody else. Man, you know what kind of, you know what kind of assurance that'll give you? What kind of faith and power that'll give you to know that, hey, me and God talked this over and he come through on my behalf. He's my father and I'm his child. Well, that's good stuff when he answers your prayer. Hey, Abraham, I don't believe he told nobody. He said, we're going to go yonder and worship and come again. And the verse 19 says, hey, him and his, him and his uh, uh, son came back and met those guys, and they went home to Beersheba. You know what he's showing? In his, I'm talking about the testimony tonight. His testimony is that his God is faithful. That's what kind of testimony we ought to have, that when people see our lives, they see our God and that our God's faithful. He's faithful. He's a good God. Amen. He takes care of his people. Amen. You can trust God. Put your faith in him. You can, you can believe him and he will come through. Abraham believed him. Look at this in Hebrews chapter number 11. He believed him. We made reference to it already. But it bears to be repeated. You can trust him. People need to see a testimony in us that everything we have belongs to our God. 
He's first in everything we do. And that our God can be trusted. He is faithful. Who, who was it over there? Was it, was it Ezra or Nehemiah when they went over there and they, they, they were coming up short and, and they could have asked the king for some relief, but instead of asking the king, they went to God because they didn't want to let the king know that their God couldn't handle it. You remember that over there? Ezra or Nehemiah somewhere over there? Hey, hey, sometimes you need to let, hey, God come through so they'll know you're real. Amen. I ain't asking no handout. I'm not against the handout. When it's needed, it's there. Thank God for things like that. Hey, but sometimes we need to let the world know, hey, our God ain't dead. Our God's able. I'm not talking about health and wealth and prosperity, but our God's good. He's faithful, amen. Hey, we, we putting on an image out in the world that our God's some weak God. He ain't weak. He's able. There's nothing too hard for him. Not a thing, amen. I'm not saying you got to be never sick and you got to always have a pocket full of money, but man, our God's able. He comes through, amen. We ain't got to run around like we're, we're, we're uh, with the po po post out lip and, and, and sour about the world. Man, our God's good. He, we serve a good God. There's nobody like our God. There's none like him in all the world. Hey, no, no God the world serves is greater than our God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jehovah God, our God, Jesus Christ. None like him, amen. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We need to show forth the testimony that he's able. He can come through. You know, when we go to getting the grumbling and complaining at the, at the same world we're trying to win to God, and they're looking at us thinking, that's the kind of God you got? I'm not saying you don't have troubles and sometimes it don't get hard, but the last person you want to share it with is somebody who don't know God. We can take our burdens and share them with one another and bear ye one another's burdens. Hey, but don't go groaning and complaining to the world. Hey, hey, don't, Christian, don't get on social media and complain about how bad your life is as a Christian. And then the next post you put on there, come down to Hopewell Baptist Church, our church. We got a great church and we love the Lord. <laughs> Listen, you might not be getting it, but the world's kind of scratching their head thinking, what is this nut? Because you know they're looking for a reason to throw off on Christianity. Don't give them a reason. Don't, don't, I'm not saying you don't have it bad sometimes, but that's not the place to put it. It's not the, you don't have to go down to your job and grumble about your Christian marriage with your co-worker that's lost. If you got Christian marriage problems, talk it over with your husband and wife, talk it over with your God, and if you feel the need to, confide in another sister or brother that's saved. Don't grumble to the world. Abraham's testimony was, my God's faithful. Hey, we going yonder to worship him, and we coming again. And he came back with him, amen. Because his God came through and he believed he would. Hey, that's the kind of testimony we need to be showing to this world. They've seen enough of that other stuff. And I'm not trying to say you got to live on the mountaintop all the time. I'm just saying we ain't got to share the valley with everybody. You understand? Hebrews chapter number 12, 11, look at verse 17. By faith, Abraham, Hebrews eleven seventeen. when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. What was the promises? That through that son, there's going to be the seed. He believed. Listen, I believe the promises. Amen. God's able. Look what he said, verse 18. Of whom it is said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead from whence also he received him in a fig. You know what Abraham knew? If I kill the boy, God's got to get him up because God promised through that child the seed was going to come. God keeps his promises. Let the world know, amen. I'm talking about a Christian testimony. Hey, you know what else the testimony had? That God blesses obedience. Every time. Look back in Genesis 22. God blesses obedience. We see through his testimony that everything he had was God's. God was first in his life. 
You can trust God because he's faithful and God blesses obedience. Genesis 22, look back to verse 17. That in blessing I will bless thee and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand is upon the seashore. He gives him the, the, the spiritual type and the, and, the, and the stars, the physical type and the, and the sand. You, think, you see through Abraham, through the physical sea, the sand, the children of Israel, the spiritual type were all the children of Abraham by faith in Jesus Christ. There's the stars of heaven. And thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. Verse 18. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. You know what we see in his testimony? God always blesses obedience. You say, what do I do? Just do right. How long? Do right. How long? Till the cows come home. I, I, what was it? Uh, uh, Bob Jones Sr. said in some of his, his famous sayings, uh, one of them, uh, the greatest two, two words, do right. Just do right. You, you, just, what do you do? Just do right. What do I do here? Just do right. God blesses obedience. Amen. And on the other side, you know, God will judge disobedience. Amen. God blesses obedience. And then you see lastly here, verse 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and I ain't going to try to read those names. I thought I did pretty good the first time. I might say I'm different the next time. <laughs> Amen. I, I read it like I was very, you know, that's how you do it. Just read it confidently, you know, and everybody knows. Just roll, man, you know. No, I believe you ought to try to read it as best you can and be distinctly in your reading like the Bible teaches. I'm just being funny right there. But it, but it is sometimes difficult to pronounce some of these names, amen. It's about like, you, you can tell everything's going round circle from the beginning to the end. You know, people say that saying, it's coming back to where it started. That's where we're at with children's names today. Mama's and daddy's name and young is like, cra it's, it's coming round circle. Them names nobody can spell and pronounce and know where, where they from. Whatever happened to Bill and John and Bob and... <laughs> Sally and Angel and you know, Angela. You know, what what happened to common names? <laughs> Amen. It's going back to the days of the Old Testament, man. They named them stuff. Who in the world knows what that kid's name is? Amen. But we see here, in the end of the passage here, Abraham's made his way back to Beersheba, and then he's, his relatives are mentioned here, which eventually through uh, he, he, his uh, son Isaac gets his bride. Amen. But somebody said this, and you know, I'll repeat it, and I ain't got enough knowledge to say whether it's yea or nay, but I do believe that the book of Job's always been the oldest book that was ever written. But in verse 21, it says, Huz, his firstborn, and Buzz, his brother. One of Job's friends, this was somebody else said, Dr. Ruckman actually said it, Buzzite, Job 32.2. It says, his, Huz, his firstborn, and Buzz, his brother. This is... E e Eli, Elihu, who wrote the book of Job, showing the book of Job was written long before Moses wrote, Gen wrote Genesis 22. He's saying, that's that, that's that youngin. That's that, hey, 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 is that right? Hey, man, I don't know. <laughs> hey, man, sounds good to me. Hey, man. It's not a good way to uh, uh, end a good Bible study where you're being confident in everything to say, hey, this is right here is what's there. But it is there. <laughs> hey, man. But Abraham had a testimony. And he's kind of like, like uh, Enoch. Gen uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5, Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. But before he had this translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. You know what we can say about Abraham? That boy had the testimony by the, by the accounting of God that he pleased him. You know what we ought to strive to want to have? A testimony that pleases God. What kind of testimony did he have? He had a testimony that everything he had was God's. God, I'm holding nothing back from you. It's all yours. Anything you want. You're first in my life. You can be trusted and you'll be faithful to come through. And that God always blesses obedience. Must please him. Get a testimony. Let the world know our God's real. And he's still on the throne. Amen. Let's have everyone stand. Well, my eyes are closed.
We'll give you a chance to maybe come to the altar tonight. See his Bible study, prayer meeting night. We've had prayer already earlier about at 6.30, but maybe somebody want to come tonight, talk something over with the Lord. Maybe something going on in your life, something going on with someone else. Maybe you want to come bear someone else's burdens at this altar tonight. You come on, amen. Come talk it over with the Lord. Maybe you're here and you're lost and need to be saved. Well, God will save your soul. Nothing like being there. Got a birthday today, amen. We'll get them, amen. Anybody need to come, you come on. Some are praying already. Something going on in your life. Come on.